the heart sachet and it does something really cool. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the heart sachet. And it actually has a really cool function that I can't wait to share with you. But before I do, if at any point in this video you do like what you see or you're enjoying the content, please push that thumbs up button. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel and click the bell and then click all. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I try to release a brand new video every single Friday covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects tips and tricks, fun giveaways. We have so much fun on this channel and you're not going to want to miss out. If you want a little bit more of my channel, check out my membership program. I have three different levels. I have the loyal supporter that gets early access to videos and special emojis that they can use. The second level is the pattern vault where you get access to all of my patterns. And third is the crafters gathering where we meet twice a week and we talk about all things. It's just a great time and I can see you and I can hear you and it's like we're in the same room together. It's a really cool experience and I really hope that you check it out. If you want to know behind the scenes action, what's happening in upcoming tutorials, what whips I'm working on, or even what materials you're going to need for upcoming videos, check out my Instagram page. There is a whole lot of behind the scenes that I do there that you can check out and get a lot of valuable information from. So definitely a lot of resources that you can check out and it's a lot of fun, good information. The pattern for the heart satchel you can find in both the description section and the comment section below this video. I, this is not my pattern. It's actually a Bernat pattern, so it's completely free. All you have to do is click on that link, print off the pattern, and be ready to crochet with me. I am so excited to share with you why this is functional, and I'm going to share that in the material section right now. So let's go ahead and hop on over to what materials I used to make the heart satchel. Okay, so the materials that we're going to need for the heart sachet will include a yarn that is a size four weight worsted medium, Aran 1012 ply or 8WPI sized yarn. Now the pattern calls for 100% cotton yarn. However, you are more than welcome to use an acrylic yarn or a cotton blend for this project. It's not a big deal. I think what the creator of this pattern was trying to get across is that you need tight stitches and some yarns do not provide that that benefit of the tighter stitches here so here i have two different colors i have one color that that will be the main color for the body and the secondary color which will be the stitch color that'll go around to the border of the heart this is an example of the demo so the main body i'm going to use this color and then the accent color i'm going to use this white cream color okay so crochet hook that the pattern calls for is an e4 or 3.5 millimeter crochet hook this is a really thin crochet hook and if you struggle to use a crochet hook that's this thin you can use a size f or g or even an h h is pushing it but a five millimeter crochet hook would be the largest I would use for this project. Probably stop at a G 4.5 millimeter crochet hook just to be safe. Uh, when it comes to these stitches with this yarn, you just need your stitches to be tight. Super important so you can't see the polyfill on the inside or you can't see the dryer softener sheets on the inside. You want it to be very clean. You want these stitches tight. So to help, you can use a thinner crochet hook. You'll need a yarn needle or tapestry needle, a pair of scissors, and now these are the optional pieces. You can pick one or the other. We have polyfill or a stuffed animal stuffing that you can insert in the inside of your heart sachet, or dryer softener sheets. This was a really cool idea a follower gave to me or told me that they did for their project. They placed dryer softener sheets inside the heart, and then they placed the heart in a dresser drawer and it keeps all of their clothes smelling refreshed and it takes away any of the odors of the drawer and it's really, really neat. So you can place this with the dryer softener sheets in any closet, drawer, desk, car. <laughs> you can really utilize this and it takes or helps eliminate certain odors from that environment. So you choose what you would like to use. 
All right, I'm going to have links for everything that you see here in the description section and the comment section below this video. All you have to do is click on that link to purchase the item and have it sent directly to you. Uh, you can, however, utilize whatever you have on hand as well. It's totally fine. Once you have everything that you need to create this project, let's get started making the heart sachet. All right, so we begin with the yarn that we're going to utilize for the main body of the heart and our crochet hook. Start with a tail long enough for us to tuck in the tail or weave in the end if that's what you choose to do. Create your slip knot, attach your crochet hook, and we are ready to begin. So we are working with a very thin crochet hook here because we want our stitches to be tight. We want our stitches to be tight so that way you cannot see through any holes or gaps between the stitches and see that polyfill or whatever you're filling inside the sachet. However, while you're working the stitches, you do not want to work your stitches so tightly that you cannot put your crochet hook <laughs> inside the stitch. So have a tighter tension, but not too tight. And you'll be able to feel it and you'll be able to gauge. So here I'm going to chain two to begin. For row one of our heart sachet, we will make two single crochet stitches in the first chain. Here's where you'll start to feel that friction and the tightness of your stitches, especially if you're working with a cotton yarn. Okay, for row two, we will chain one. We will turn our work. And for row two, we will make two single crochet stitches in each stitch space, having a total of four single crochet stitches by the end of row two. So first stitch space, Got one, same stitch, two, next stitch, three, and four. Perfect, okay. For row three, we will chain one. We will turn our work and make one increase single crochet stitch in the first stitch then one single crochet stitch in the next two stitches, and then increase single crochet in the last stitch. And an increase single crochet just means make two single crochet stitches there. So first stitch, make two single crochets. One, two. Next stitch, make just one single crochet. Next stitch, just make one single crochet. And the following stitch, make two single crochets. Great. Awesome. Just finished row three. Now the repeat pattern for row four through the end of row 13, you're going to begin and end with two single crochet stitches and then make just one single crochet stitch in each stitch space in between. Okay, so you should see this triangular shape being created as it expands out. We're starting at the bottom of the heart and we're expanding out before we get to the middle section. All right, so just finished row three. Go ahead and finish through the end of row 13 and I'll meet you at the end of row 13 to show you how we work that middle section of the heart right there. So chain one, turn our work. Number two single crochet, one, 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 and ending with two single crochets. Perfect last stitch for row 13 here. This is what you should be looking at roughly right here. Boom. All right, let's move on to row 14. For row 14, we will chain one. We will turn our work 
And for row 14, we are just making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. You should have a total of about 26 stitches here. So let me count for you. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Yes. Okay. So you should end with a total of 26 stitches along the top here. Here we go. Perfect. There we go. 26. All right. Just finished row 14. To move on to row 15, we will chain one, turn our work. Row 15 just repeats what we did for row two and three and all the ones in between. We're going to make two single crochet stitches in the first stitch space, make one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across, and end with two single crochet stitches in the very last stitch space. You should end this row, row 15, with a total of 28 stitches. So one and then same stitch space, two, next stitch space, and three, four, five, 27 and uh, 28. There we go. All right. Okay. So for row 16 through the end of row 22, all we are doing is chaining one turning our work and making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. Then chaining one to get to the next row and making one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. So repeat that pattern for row 16 through the end of row 22. I will meet you at the end of row 22 to show you what we do different with row 23. So this section right now we're doing is the flat section. At row 23, we will start making the humps. Yay! All right, here we go. Great, just finished row 22. This is what we're looking at roughly right here. Perfect. We are now ready to make the first bump on the top of the heart. So for row 23, we're going to chain one. We will turn our work. For row 23, we will begin by making a single crochet to tog. What that means is just taking these first two single crochet or these first two stitches and making them into one using a single crochet stitch. So how we will do that is we will insert a crochet hook into that first stitch space, yarn over, pull through, insert our crochet hook into the second stitch space, yarn over, pull through, three loops on our crochet hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops on our crochet hook, and that is a single crochet to tog. Now we're going to make one single crochet stitch in the next 11 stitch spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Great. Okay, so for row 24, we will chain one. We will turn our work. For row 24, we will make one single crochet stitch in the following stitch spaces, leaving the last two stitch spaces unworked. And we will end row 24 by making a single crochet to tog in those last two stitches. Here we go.
okay last two stitches of row 24 let's do that single crochet to tog perfect great for row 25 we will chain one we will turn our work for row 25 we will begin with a single crochet to tog then work one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across leaving behind two stitch spaces unworked and ending with a single crochet to tog. So here we go. So we begin with a single crochet to tog, then single crochet across, leaving two stitches unworked and making a single crochet two tog in those last two stitches. Perfect. Great. We are now on to row 26. For row 26, we will chain one. We will turn our work. We will begin with a single crochet two tog. Beautiful. And then we will make one single crochet stitch in each stitch across, leaving the last two stitch spaces unworked. Here we go. Got one, two, perfect. Okay, so again, we're leaving those last two stitch spaces completely unworked. Grab your scissors, cut a decent tail about three, four inches long. We really don't have to weave anything in on this project. You can if you want to, but I will just end up taking these tails and tucking them into the inside of the work. Okay, so we have one heart hump done. Let's go to the next one. So let's turn our work. Grab your yarn. Start with a long enough tail for you to weave in your ends or at least tuck in that tail. Create your slip knot, attach your crochet hook. Great. Okay, coming to your heart. Find where your heart, the middle of your heart ended and then count two stitch spaces. One, two. In the third stitch space over, we're going to slip stitch to attach our yarn to the project. Oops, slip stitch, there we go. Then chain one, and we are set up to begin our next, our new row here. So this would be row 23 on the other side. What we will do is we will make one single crochet stitch in the same stitch we just slip stitched in, and continue to make one single crochet stitch in each stitch across, leaving the last two stitch spaces unworked. We are going to make a single crochet to tog in those last two stitch spaces. Here we go. All right, one, two, let's do that single crochet two tog. Perfect. All right. Chain one, turn our work. This would be what we would consider row 24 of the other side. We will begin with a single crochet two tog and then make one single crochet stitch in each stitch all the way across. Awesome. All right. So for row 25, we will chain one. We will turn our work. For row 25, we will begin with a single crochet two tog and we will end with a single crochet two tog, making one single crochet stitch in each stitch in between. So the first two stitches and the last two stitches are taken with a single crochet two tog and then just make one single crochet stitch in between.
ending with the single crochet to tog. Perfect. Now we're on to row 26. For row 26, we will actually not chain one. We're going to just turn our work. We're going to begin row 26 by slip stitching into the first two stitches to get us into the work. So slip stitch into the first stitch space, slip stitch into the second stitch space, and then chain one and we are ready to begin. We will single crochet in each stitch across, leaving behind the last two stitches. We're going to single crochet to tog the last two stitches together. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, and then single crochet to tog. Perfect. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and grab our scissors, cut a tail, tie this off by yarning over the tail, pulling it through the crochet hook or the loop on your crochet hook and pulling tight. And there you go. There is your heart. So you're going to repeat this entire process one more time. You want two of these, two of these. Once you have made both, come back here and I will show you how we will join them together and make sure we add the stuffing and the border. Great, now that you have both pieces created, we are ready to join these together. So go ahead and place one on top of the other. If you want, you can look at both pieces, find which side has a flaw. This side did have a bit of a flaw right here where the yarn itself had a join. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that is in the middle or the inside, line my hearts up so they perfectly overlap each other. I'm gonna take these tails and actually insert the tails on the inside of the work. Don't need to actually weave anything in here. This will do just fine. Great, and if they get away from you, you can always retuck them in as you're going around the work, joining everything together. Okay, so grabbing the color that you wanna to use to join the heart together Long enough tail, slip knot, attach your crochet hook, perfect. So I am going to join my yarn in this corner right here where there was that abrupt drop off. Okay, so I'm gonna insert my crochet hook into the first stitch space there and follow through all the way over. Going to start by slip stitching just so that way I can attach my yarn to the project. My cotton does not want to cooperate. I'm going to go this way. There we go. Okay, once you have slip stitched your work, I'm going to take that tail that I just made and insert that on the inside of the work too. Then you're going to chain one and single crochet in that same, all the way through, same stitch. And that is your first stitch for your border. You're going to make one single crochet stitch through both sides of the work in each stitch all the way around. In this corner or this peak right here, you're going to make three single crochet stitches in this peak and I will do this with you. I'm gonna actually go ahead and slowly go around this whole heart with you. That way you don't feel lost going or crocheting in the sides of rows at all, okay? So going to go through. Okay, when we come to the side here, just gonna kind of follow it. Doesn't have to be perfect. The side of each row should have one single crochet stitch, okay? So here I have two single, or two rows, so I'm gonna make sure I put 
one single crochet stitch in the side of the top of the row. And here's the bottom of the row, one single crochet stitch in the bottom of the row. And again, does not have to be perfect by any means. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and insert right here. So see how this stitch takes that stitch space? Looking in the second one, over, there we go. Next stitch space. we go okay next bump kind of move these tails out of the way okay so 23 row 23 side of that row twenty four. Twenty five and twenty six is going to be this top corner. Twenty six. So that's what we are looking at at the top of our heart right now. Then we can single crochet along the top here. So in this corner here, that is 26. Next row, 25. Twenty-four. And I'm gonna do this to keep count. Twenty-three. 22, 21, 21. Sometimes you have to go through one side first and then the other. 20. Looking at my rows, top 19. Eighteen, seventeen, sixteen. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, 
three. There we go. Two, and then in the last stitch space here, we will make three single crochet stitches. One, two, three, and what I'm gonna do now, see how, look how clean this is looking. I'm going to go inside and I'm going to pull all of the, just give a little tug to all of the tails to make sure everything is inside of the sachet. Just wanna make sure everything can be hidden away, tucked away, and cleaned up. Great. And then we can start working along the other side. So again, there's a total of 26 rows. So we should get to a total of 25, and then on that 26th stitch, there's already a stitch there, so we'll just slip stitch into the top of the first single crochet stitch we made to close off this border. So, row two. And row three. And four. And five. And six. And seven. And eight. Nine. Ten. All right, stop at ten, pause at ten. Here we go, make ten. Here we go. It's at this point. I want you to start stuffing the inside of your heart because there's just enough of an opening where we can get to the other side of the heart and start molding and forming our actual image here. Okay, so I'm going to be utilizing the dryer softener sheets. If you want, you can use the polyfill. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this sheet and I'm gonna wad it up and then I'm gonna insert it into the farthest spot I can get it. Now, depending on how many dryer softener sheets you have to utilize, you can spread these out more or you can really pack them in. It's totally up to you. So this is three. I like to keep it light and flat. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I'm gonna stop here at 10 because I was at least able to get this side of my heart formed. I'm gonna continue to work my border up a little bit more and then I'll pause and stuff. Work more, pause, stuff, all the way up to the end. And then before you actually officially close, we'll do a last second check before we close off this join. So 11. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 
17, 18, 19, 20, make. That's 11 sheets. 13 14 and I'll probably end with 15 and 15 there we go Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Great. Do one final check. Make sure that's okay with you. I like mine flat. Check all around your join making sure you didn't leave any holes or missed stitches and then go to the back and make sure you were able to get both sides incorporated in the join and you didn't forget a stitch on the back end great okay so we just ended at 25 now we want to go straight to 26 there are two slip stitches here that we're going to completely skip and we're going to kind of let it fall into each other here that way it has more of a smooth dimension like the other side so i'm going to go ahead and find the 26th stitch here yarn over pull through and pull all the way through pull that tight there we go for that join right there Perfect. Now we're not going to tie off. We have one more round that we're going to make around the border of the heart. And that is going to be the skip stitch border that will help us to weave in the secondary yarn to give it that really cute little, little bit of detail right there. Okay, so for round two of our border, we're going to chain one. We're going to single crochet in the same stitch that we just slip stitched into. Maybe. Let's try it. Got a whole lot of loose yarns. There we go. Single crochet. Then we're going to chain one, skip the next stitch, and single crochet in the following stitch space. And then chain one, skip the next stitch and single crochet in the following stitch space repeat this pattern all the way around this entire heart i'll meet you back here to close off round two and we will go ahead and finish off this heart Chain one, skip. Chain one, skip. right last stitch i'm going to slip stitch into the top of the first stitch space to close there we go perfect so i'm going to chain one skip that last stitch space and instantly close by slip stitching into the first single crochet stitch grab your scissors cut a long enough tail yarn over pull that through the end here 
Hold tight for a tie off. Perfect. Great. And then here is what your heart should roughly look like. Right there. We can then take our crochet hook, come from the back of the work, insert your crochet hook into the work. Find that tail and tuck that tail on the inside of the work. And it is gone. Or you can go ahead and weave that end in with your tapestry needle or yarn needle, whatever you would like to do. All right, let's go ahead and grab our second color that we want to utilize. And this is going to be the color we're going to weave through those chain one spaces. Okay, so I like to loosely take my yarn, start with like five, six inches, then very loosely, make my way around. It's okay to have to err on too much. You don't want to do too little and then not have enough. There we go. And then I'll cut over here. And that should give me roughly exactly how much yarn I will need for this part. Okay, so I'm going to start by taking my yarn needle, tapestry needle, and inserting from the front of the work back. I'm going to find the middle of my heart right here, inserting into the spot on the side of the middle and holding some back so I have some yarn left over to make the bow. And then finding the chain one space, I'm gonna start weaving in and out of the chain one spaces. Right, and then making your way all the way around. What I'm gonna do is my last stitch. I want this stitch to be on this side, or this tail, I want this tail to be on this side, I want this tail to be on this side, so that way now I can actually tie my bow. All right, so again, before we tie our bow, give your Self, one more check here. Make sure you didn't skip a chain one space. When you're ready, go ahead and tie your bow in the middle. Knot. Then I do a loop and then a loop. I only do this type, I don't do this when tying my shoes, but I do this when tying like a really pretty bow. There we go. Have the two ends go out the bottom. And if you have another way that you like to tie your bows, utilize whatever way looks best for you. Cute, and then clean up the tails. And there, there is your little heart sachet. Super cute. All right, so what did you think of the heart sachet? I hope it worked up really fast for you and you make a whole bunch. And I'd love to hear what you put inside of this heart sachet. Did you go polyfill? Did you choose to do the dryer softener sheets? Or maybe did you choose to add some potpourri on the inside to give it a little extra boost of maybe a favorite scent that you just love to have around your home, or even your car? 
or your desk or wherever you put it. I'd love to even know where you plan on putting it or if you just plan on gifting them or selling them. This, there's just so many possibilities that you can do with these. And I really hope that you enjoyed this project. If you did, check out these videos right here, which are more projects related to this very one. Also check out this video right here, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Again, if you like this video, please push the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't, that way you don't miss my upcoming videos. Check out my membership program. See if there is one that fits you best. And I hope you have the best day, guys. Thank you so much for crocheting with me. I always love crocheting with you. I really do hope you have the best day. And I will see you with my next video. Bye, guys.